videography. Taking a full mouth series of x-rays. Okay, so a full mouth series of x-rays is what? How many films? 14. Eight. Oh, can't. 18. 18. Can be 20. You add okay. two extra PAs in the front. There's 14 PAs and four bite wings. Okay, so what you need, armamentarium. And this is what's going to be set up over there. You're going to need the barriers on your operatory. Make sure everything's ready. You need the film. You need the, whatever holder you're using. Okay. Um, these are XCP holders. I can just use that little alligator one, and I'll show you that one. But to start off, you'll probably use the XCP holder. You need the lead apron and the thyroid collar for your patient. Container for exposed film if you want, uh, or the girls just use a, a, a cup and put them in there, the ones that they're taking, or some of them, um, they lay out their, their template and they, they flip over the ones that they've already taken, okay, so that they don't reuse them. So you'll, you'll come up with your own uh, with your own technique. And a paper towel, because when it comes out of the mouth, it's usually all slobbery. Make sure you dry them. Again, got slobber all over. Procedure, okay, you again, review the patient's chart, put barrier, make sure everything's got barriers. This is important, again, on some of you guys missed uh, the consent question on the last test. It's informed consent, informed consent. Again, you're telling the patient what you're going to do. Is it okay, Mrs. So-and-so? Okay. Um, make sure they're going to ask questions. And why do I need x-rays? without x-ray. The doctor needs to see the bone and he needs to see the, the end of the end of the tooth and make sure there's no infections that we can't see without x-rays. And some will say, I don't want any x-rays. You have those patients. If it's a new patient, you have to decide what we want to see them because you get those patients that are really demanding and sometimes we'll say, you know, Mrs. Smith, I think you may need to go to another practice because this is our policy and this is how we practice it. Some patients, you know, they have that are on cancer treatment, they've had chemotherapy and radiation treatments. I'll talk to them and see, you know, some of them, they're really concerned. I'll say, okay, well, for now, we'll, we'll do a clinical exam. I can't see everything, and I'll have them sign. You know, I'll have them sign that, you know, I'm not doing a comprehensive exam because I'm missing the x-rays, but I understand them, and, but eventually we have to take them. If they say, no, I don't want any x-rays ever, then I can't, but if they say, well, Today we won't, but maybe next time we will need to take them. So again, as long as the patient understands that they sign and, and uh, know that we need them, then sometimes I can. But if, if they just say no, we just say we can't do it. Some patients come back for recall, for maintenance or follow-ups, and they say, I don't want any x-rays this time. But we'll still have them tell them, you know, it's been a year, we want, we need them. Oh, I want to skip them this time. Okay, and we have them sign may miss something, and, but if they keep saying, I don't want x-rays, I don't want x-rays, I don't want x-rays, time and time again, then we dismiss them from the, from the practice, because we can't, we can't do a good exam without them. Okay, make sure your hands are clean, prepare, prepare on those supplies. You don't have to have your gloves on while you're setting things up, okay? Make sure your hands are clean, your gloves on, are gonna, your gloves are going to go on right before you start to go in the mouth. Okay, you can put, you can put the bib on, the, the nap, or lead apron on the patient, have everything laid out, and then right before you're going to start, put your, put your glasses, or you don't need your glasses, you need a mask, and then put your gloves on. Okay, you want to make sure the machine is on, and that everything is proper, and we'll, we'll check that for you, kind of explain that, make sure the patient is in the upright position for the most part, they're seating, okay, sitting down, remove, again, jewelry or x-rays, or uh, eyeglasses if they need, place the blood apron. After the patient is in the position, okay, then you put on your gloves. Okay, so for the maxillary arch, okay, so x-rays for the top, anterior, so your eight, nine, okay, insert the dot, and you guys felt the dot, or 
be A on our film. It's an A. Okay, and you'll see you'll see the film. It's got a, you'll see the letters, and it'll say A, and it'll say our film say expose on opposite side. Okay, so for these old ones, you're gonna expose on the white. Okay, not the colored on the white. On our digital ones, it'll say you'll be able to see, and it'll say. It says, has the manufacturer's name and it says expose other side or beam on other side of film or something like that. And then you'll see an A. And that A has to be, uh, Dr. Charantis will go over where, on a certain corner in order to facilitate you mounting them. Okay? But it has to be readable. If it's upside down, then it, it's, it's reversed. The film is reversed. Okay, so the white side or the text side on the digital should be in clear view uh, with the gray or the colored side against the plastic support. Okay, uh, when we're talking about color, we're talking about this, this film, the old film. And that's what will be on the test. Okay, some of them will be, we will talk about this because you've got to learn about the old ones. Uh, not only for your knowledge, but also for the board exam. Again, the dot is an orientation, and that goes down into the into the I don't have one of the holders, but that goes down onto the biting uh, the part of the biting uh, plate. Okay, so you don't leave the dot up on top; it goes into the into the holder. Let me show you that. You move the ring back in the metal portion of the ring holder away from the bite block. Bring the two pad. Tilt the film, and we'll go over that. Uh, okay, the inside of the ledges are going to rest. You're going to have the patient bite down on the on the biting portion, the bite block. So it looks like this. Okay, this is the holder. This is the ring hold. This is a plastic ring. Here's your tube head. The patient's incisors are biting on the bite plate right there. Okay, and again, you just align it so that it's pretty much parallel to that ring. Okay, you don't want it like this. Again, this is giving you the, that bisecting angle. This, this guy is setting it up for you. Okay? Um, so you want to be parallel to that. You don't want to have the tube coming down this way. And also, not just like this, but left and right too. Okay, it has to be pretty much parallel to this. I'm sorry? as centered as you can get it and as close to this ring as possible. Sometimes it interferes back here, so it doesn't have to be right up against it, but it should be parallel. Okay, your cuspid or your, your, your canine, okay? Again, you want to have, you're going to have that canine right in the middle of that bite plane. You're going to put it in and instruct the patient to bite down. Now, this is on the test. Due to the curvature of the maxillary arch, Okay, because of where your canine is, we talked about overlapping, okay, because of where your canine is, it's on the arch right there, and where you place your film, you're going to get overlapping, no matter, and that's, no matter how good you are at x-rays, it's going to overlap just because it's in the corner, and your x-rays are going to, you know, they can't, you can't open, open up the contact, so due to the curvature of the maxillary arch, the distal portion of the Cuspid may overlap the first bicuspid, and that's okay. okay. Sometimes it won't, but most of the time you're going to get overlap. Okay, that's on the test. Here's the positioning on the cuspid. Okay. Again, you've got the, your eye tooth is right in the middle of that bite block. Okay. When you're taking the front one to bite, your two front teeth are right in the middle. You're, you're just going to keep sliding back. When you're taking the premolar, you want the premolars right in the middle. When you're taking the molars, you want the molars right in the middle. Now, some patients may gag, and you can't go as far back as you want to, but again, you have to make sure you're trying to get as far back as you can. So for the premolars, tilt the loaded film, and you're going to place it into the patient's mouth. Here's, here's the, the important thing. The anterior edge of the film, so the front edge of the film, has to be on the distal half of the canine. Okay, so if you're taking 
Now I'll put it on the outside, but it should it really is on the inside here, okay? So just assume it's on the on the lingual side. This would be the proper placement for the premolar bite wing or PA. Okay, see the canine? You want to be the, at the middle or the distal half of the canine. Obviously it's over here on the inside, but you should be here. Okay, you want to see the distal half of that canine on your premolar x-ray, bite wing or or a PA. The anterior edge of the film should be behind the middle of the cuspid in order for the film to capture the area of the two premolars. Okay, that's on the test multiple times. Hold the film in place and instruct the patient to bite down. Bring the tube head in. The bite block should be centered on the premolars if you're trying to get the premolars. Okay, so something like this. Okay, here's the film. Now we're off in the front, but again, here's the cuspid and the front of the film. If you're looking at it this way, should be splitting the cuspid in the middle. Again, and you can see how the how we're going here, 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 and then the other one's going to be there for the molars. Okay, so for the molars, again, you place it in the patient's uh, mouth. Go back. Okay, here's the important thing. The exposed radiograph should reveal the open contact between the first and second molars. The distal of the second molar should be evident on the radiograph, okay? You want to see the back end of that second molar. Okay, so you're going to go as back as possible, as far back as possible so you can see the distal of that last molar. And one, one way to do it is you want to be, I think it covers it on the premolar side, distal, just like to get it, to get the, the premolars, you were distal of the canine, to get the molar shot, you want to try to get almost the distal half of the second premolar. Okay, so the second premolar, you want the film about right here for the molar shot. Okay, and sometimes the patient will gag and you can't get as far back, okay, but you want to be about the distal of the second premolar. So for the premolar, to take the premolar shot, you want to be distal of the canine. For the molar shot, distal of the premolar. Okay, so for, that, that's the upper arch. So for the lower arch, you've got the mandibular incisors, okay? Uh, so your lower your lower front teeth, okay. The tilt the load tilt the loaded film holder and place it in the patient's mouth. Gently press the film on the floor of the mouth, slightly behind the lingual surface of the incisor. This patients don't like this one. Okay, there's not enough room there, and it's really sensitive. Okay, but this is on the test. You're going to depress. You're going to push down slowly on the floor of the mouth. Try to get it down. And, and, and sometimes you have to go back okay, because the film may not fit. The film may not fit. The closer you are to the to the arch, it narrows. Okay, so sometimes you've got to kind of push back the tongue, and you're going to go down back back here in order to get it to, to slide down. Okay, now it's going to tip a little bit because you're going to bisect that angle, but you want to push depress the floor of the mouth. You've got to push the floor of the mouth down. If not. You won't get it. The film's just going to lay down. They're going to bite on the film like this. So you've got to push it down and then have them bite down on the bite block. And it's not comfortable. And you have to, if you're gentle, and tell the patient, you know, this this is a tough one. It may, it's not going to be comfortable. I'm going to be as gentle as I can, but bear with me for just a second. As soon as you hear the beep, you can let it go. And just gentle position and have them bite down. And they're going to, their tears are up their eyes. And, and you just, okay, hold it, hold it, hold it, and go and press the button and then have them open. That's not a comfortable one when you're dealing with the front end. So there's three there in the lower front, the, the centrals and the canines. But you, you just got to have the patient bear with you. Because if you miss it, then you got to retake it. So instruct the patient to slowly close on the bike block while you hold it and fold it. Uh, let's see. It's kind of the same thing. Bring it so that it's parallel. So that's kind of what it looks like right there. And just slide the ring up, put the tube there, snap it. 
Okay, the cuspid, the same thing. You're going to center the cuspid on the bottom. Okay, again, if it's not comfortable. Again, try to, if it's not going down, try to go away from the teeth. Try to push yourself away because you're probably in the next space where it's too narrow. Okay, so kind of, the, kind of same thing. Just push it down. Have center the cuspid. Center the cuspid on the bite block and then have them bite down. Okay, the premolars. Okay, position the anterior edge of the film in the middle of the canine. Okay, this is for anterior peak, anterior PAs. Okay, position, again, same thing as up on top. You want to see the distal half of the canine. Okay, same thing. What was that? So again, for the premolars, you want... Interior edge of the of the film to get the canine. You want to see the distal of the canine. Mandibular molars. Again, you want to see the distal of the second premolar, or as far back as you can, as long as you cover the distal half of the last molar that you see. Uh, okay. So that's kind of what the molar one looks like. Again, you're just sliding down the arch, and again, as the arch. It's, you know, it's not, it's not a square, okay, it, it's an arch. And so as you're, as you're taking your film, you're going as an arch. If this is the front, you're going here, and then when you get to the premolar, you're not going like this. You're not squaring off, you're coming at the arch angle, and then here you're, so you're gently rotating your beam so that you're, you're trying to split that, that contact open. And if you're not rotating your beam, you're going to get overlaps all the time. Okay, so bite wings, so for your premolar bite wings, there are two types to position, bite wing tabs, okay, like we talked about, the bite wing tabs. Bite wing tabs come with adhesive bags that attach directly to the radiograph. The position the instrument includes a bite wing holder indicator rod and a positioning ring. We'll show you that. Using the bite wing tab, the film should be held horizontally. Okay, horizontally meaning like this. Okay, because the patient's going to bite down on it like this. Okay, you don't want to put it like this vertically. Okay, sometimes we do take them like that if the patient has advanced bone loss and we can't see. Again, bite wings you detect decay and the crest of the bone. And if you can't see the crest on the bone on a film like this, then sometimes we'll put it like this, but not usually. Those are, call, are, are called vertical bindings. But usually you put the film horizontally, the, the tab, the bite wing tab. Okay, so that's on the test. The film should be held horizontally and apply the tab in the center of the film. When positioning the film, place the film with the anterior edge of the middle of the canine. Again, for the premolar shot, middle of the canine.
So if they only have one premolar, just distal of whatever premolar is there if you want it for the, for the molar shot. Okay, so again, you can see how this is rotating here. And it's being more, it's more at a, at a direct angle this way where your premolar was here, now it's going this way. And you've got to follow that arch and everybody's arch is different. So you got to pay attention. Yay. So you don't have to, unless you want to write them down. 